Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'd like to talk about Excel and absolute referencing. Now absolute referencing is when you want to copy and paste formulas or functions that have cell references in and you would like the cell reference to stay in the same place. So I've just set up a quick demonstration here of the sort of thing that we're talking about. If I want to copy this number one down, I would go equals and I click onto that cell. So that's F6. So let's press enter and I've got the number one. Now, if I drag this down, you'll see that we've got ones in them all. But let's have a look at the actual cell reference. So let's go back to the first one and I'm going to press F2 just to show you. Can you see that's referring to F6? Now if I come further down and press F2, it's now referring to F14. So as I drag that down, in other words, I'm copying and pasting using the fill handle, it's increasing the cell reference from the first one, which is F6. So let's just have a look again got F6 the next one is F7 and so on so it's increasing that number by one well that number is the row number in this particular example we may want that row row 6 to actually stay there we might want to some companies call it fix it or fix in or anchor that particular row now let's have a look at dragging across to the right i'll do it on this one here so let's just click on to it so we've got f8 in that cell just there if you look on the formula bar we've got f8 and if i drag that to the right let's see what we've got now you can see if i just press f2 we've got g8 so what that's done that's maintained the row number so there's f8 there and this one's g8 so it's maintained the row number it's maintained that eight if i just pull it across a bit more this one we've got g8 then we've got h8 so what's happening is the column reference that's the f g and h which is your columns that's increasing by one but the row numbers stay in the same because I'm dragging it across to the right. If I wanted that to point to that two, three, four, five, I want that column number to increase. Let's have a look at this again. So I'm just going to type equals and point to this one. So when I drag this down, I don't want that six to move. I always want to point to that row six. So what we do is put a dollar sign, let's just manually put this in for now, in front of the six. That means that six will always stay six. So if I pull this down now, okay, we've still got ones again, but let's look at the cell reference. Press F2, can you see now it's pointing at the top so what I've done by putting that dollar sign in front of the six I have absolute referenced that six or I've fixed the six or anchored the six whatever sort of terminology you like absolute referencing is the is the actual terminology but a lot of companies use different terms now you see I can pull this across to the right and you'll see that the F has become G, H, I, J, but the six is still six. So if I now copy all these down, and let's just click into any cell, press F2, you can see that that six, K6, it's still pointing to row six. So what we've done is absolute referenced the six in this particular scenario. Now, when you are putting these dollar signs in, Let's just delete this for you. When you're putting the dollar signs in, let's just do equals and point to that one for you. If I wanted to fix 
both of these, in other words, absolute reference the F and the six, then you need a dollar sign in front of the F to absolute the F and a dollar sign in front of the six to absolute the six. You don't need to actually put them in manually. If you press F4 on your keyboard, it actually puts a dollar sign in front of the F and the six. So that fixes the column and the row. But if you press F4 again, it takes one of them out. So now we've got a relative F. So F will become G, H, I when I drag across to the right or copy and paste to the right. But six is absoluted. If I press F4 once more, it swaps them over. So now the F is absoluted and the six is relative. So if I did that in that scenario, when I drag this down, okay, we still get ones. That's because it's looking at the one above, but let's just press F2 to see where it's pointing. Can you see that that has increased the number? So it's always pointing to the one above. That's why we call it relative because it's relative to the active cell. So in that first cell, we are pointing to the one above. And when we come down here, it's still pointing to the one above because the row number has increased and we've fixed the column letter F. So if I do drag this across to the right, you can see instead of getting two, three, four, five, six, I'm just getting one, 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 because let's look at the cell reference. It's still pointing to column F. It's the F that hasn't changed. So as I drag to the right, F is staying there. But if I drag this down, and let's look at one of these, you can see that the F has stayed there. So your cell reference is still over in column F, but your row number has increased by one. So that's absolute referencing, but let's look at it in a more practical situation than this. Let's go over to this sheet. So along the top here, I've actually got some exchange rates for different countries. These are actually live, so I can perhaps show you another video on uh, later on on how to get live exchange rates in here, but these are live. And then I've just got some dummy data on the left hand side for products with their prices. If I wanted to know what this product is worth in US dollars and also in the Euro, Philippine peso, Australian dollar and so on, then I need to multiply that 96 in that first one by the £1.34 and then I need to drag it across and multiply that 96 by 118 and so on all the way across. And then when I drag this down, I want to point to each of these prices on the left hand side, but I still want to point to the one at the top. So in other words, I want to absolute reference the row number, and it's row two, if we look along there, when we drag down, we don't want row two to become row three, row four. We want that to stay as row two. But when I drag across to the right rather than down so that I can find the value for each of the countries, I always want to point to the price. So in other words, I want to fix or absolute reference that column C. So I want to fix the two for dragging down and I want to fix the C for dragging across to the right or copying and pasting. So let's do this equals and there's my price. So when I drag this down, I want to point to the next price and the next one. So I want that four to become a five, a six, a seven and an eight. So we can just leave that one because that's what we call relative. That one's fine. But when I drag this across to the right, I don't want that C to become D and E. I want it to stay in that column C that's there. So what you do is press F4 once, then press it again. Now the dollar sign's in front of the four, but I don't want to fix that one or absolute it. So press F4 once more, and I've now absolute referenced column C. So when I drag down, the four will become five, six, seven, eight. But when I drag to the right, the C will stay C. Now I need to multiply that by that change rate up there, D2. 
Now let's think about what we're doing here. When we drag down, we don't want to move away from that £1.34. So that's in row two. So I need to absolute row two. But when I drag across to the right, I want to move across to E2, F2. So I don't want to fix that D, do I? I want to fix the two. So let's press F4 once, twice. So what we've got is in the first reference, C4, we're absolute in column C. So that's that column. That means when I drag to the right, we're always pointing to the price. But the four will become five, six, seven, eight when I drag it down. So we're looking at the different prices on the way down. And then this D2, the D is relative. So the D will become E, F, G, and so on as I drag it to the right. But the two is absoluted. So as I pull this down, that two will stay two and always point to £1.34. So let's do this. Let's press enter and send that down. And let's just test it. Let's just pick one of these at random. Press F2 and you can see I'm multiplying this 134 by that £1.34. We haven't moved away from the £1.34, but we have moved down through the prices. So now let's just copy this across to the right. Let's pull it across to Switzerland. And here I always want to point to that price. So we fixed column C, but I want to point to the prices at the top. So let's just pick the Philippines for example, press F2 and you can see that the C, column C was fixed. So we're still pointing at the 96 pound, but that F2 We've stayed on two, but we've moved along to F. So now, because row two is fixed and, or absoluted, and we want to copy this down, when we copy these down, we stay on row two. But of course, it will copy down and point to the different prices as we go down. So let's just send that down and pick one of these at random. Let's do this one, Australia. Press F2 and you can see I'm still multiplying by that one on the left by that one on the top. Just to go over that again, we've absolute referenced column C so that we can drag across or copy across to the right without moving. And we've absolute referenced row two in this second reference so that we can actually copy it down and it stays in row two. There we have all of our prices. There's a bit of formatting not there. So the best way to do this, I'm just going to undo that. I've already got some formatting up here. So all I need to do is copy that formatting down to this row here. So if I highlight all of those, Control C and then put it into USA. And remember, I'm going to paste the formatting, not the figures. So if you come up to this paste up here and come down to this one that says formatting, click that and that sends all the formats for the different country currency signs down there and two decimal places. So now all I need to do is highlight that row and send it all down and we're nicely formatted. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel and clicking that bell so you get notification of new videos. And if you liked this video, please click that like button because it does help the channel. Look forward to seeing you in the next video and thanks very much for watching.